Hey everyone, this is Joshua Smith, Senior UAS Forensic Specialist at SkySafe. This is our first webinar and we'll be talking about drone seizure and recovery. The first minutes responding to a drone incident can make or break an investigation. For this webinar, we are going to cover the right steps to take when responding to a drone incident. The proliferation of drones over the last few years have demonstrated the vast utility of drones. The criminal element has also seen this value, and drones are routinely used for illegal activities. Some of these activities include contraband smuggling, surveillance, and even open warfare, which we see routinely in the Ukraine war. Responding to a drone incident. There are three main steps to take. Assess the scene, preserve and document, and identify additional evidence. <clears throat> when assessing the scene, you want to ensure there's no immediate threat or danger. Number one, we want to make sure there's no dangerous payloads or anything like that. When preserving and documenting, we're talking about a chain of custody. We're referring to photographing your scene um, and taking very good and copious notes. And identifying additional evidence, we're talking about uh, mobile devices, witnesses. Drones typically require a mobile device or a controller to operate, and a pilot's probably going to be nearby. When assessing the scene, first things first, safety. If you identify a hazardous payload, do not approach it and notify appropriate personnel. If you do encounter a drone that is flying or still potentially airworthy, take the following steps. Approach from behind. And you can utilize a jacket, a blanket, a net, a towel, anything like that to throw over the drone to do two different things, really. You want to obstruct the pilot's view, and you don't want it to take off again. You want to approach from the rear as well. That way the pilot cannot see you from the camera. Now it's time to document. One of the first things you want to do is take really good 360 degree photographs of the drone. When doing this, try to get a picture of establishing objects in the background, like a building, a street sign, or some significant marking. Another method of documenting your evidence is using the triangulation method. The triangulation method documents the location of a specific object or point by creating a triangle of measurements from a single specific identifiable point on an item to two fixed points within the incident scene. By triangulating a downed drone, you're able to accurately create a sketch of the scene. A sketch with accompanying scene photo photographs can accurately recreate a scene for key stakeholders down the road. For example, a criminal case may not go to trial for years, and the ability to recreate that scene using a sketch in your photographs is key. We'll use this scene photograph to explain how triangulation works. As you can see, there's the down drone, and off to the right we have a restroom building, a nice fixed object, and we have an electric vehicle charger as well. So I'm going to triangulate it off of those two items. You want to pick items that are fixed and permanent that aren't really going to go anywhere. As you can see here we have a nice little sketch we've created. This is a very basic sketch but this is something that can go in your case file and, and be part of your investigation so that down the road the scene can be easily reconstructed and presented. When documenting on your chain of custody, always defer to your agency SOP and policies. When properly packaging your evidence, give consideration to using a LiPo storage bag for batteries. Don't forget, most drones contain an insertable micro SD card. 
These SD cards contain a ton of valuable evidence to include media and video files. Drones typically require a mobile device or controller to operate. If the pilot is present, strong consideration should be given to seizing the controller and any mobile device associated with the drone. Now make sure you're doing this legally and within the confines of your re regulations and local laws. Obtain any password or PIN codes for the mobile device. Secure the mobile device by putting it in an airplane mode and placing it in a Faraday bag. Determine if there are any witnesses to the incident, and if so, interview them. Thanks for joining us in this webinar, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us in the training team. Thank you.